You asked for it. Here it is. It's a podcast from Apathetic Enthusiasm. Coming to you live from a different style of animation. Are we talking rotoscoping? No. Are we talking Bill Clinton or Don Hertzfeld? No. Reject that thought. We're talking about something new. It's Interdimensional RSS, the unofficial Rick and Morty, the anime podcast. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to a brand new, completely different, totally international uh, version of this show. Welcome to Interdimensional RSS, the unofficial Rick and Morty podcast. <laughs> I'm Travis. Hey, everybody. I'm Brandon. Welcome. Welcome to the show. It's been a while since we've done one of these actual episodes. It's and, been a while. Sorry, and uh, we, we are enormously prepared mentally and uh, with show notes. For, for for you this afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you're listening to this. Yeah, whenever you listen. I feel I feel it's important for people to know that we've worked all week uh on this on this show. So uh we are recording on a Monday. Uh <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh we are excited to be back. We are excited to be talking about Rick and Morty again. Um and as you probably know, uh Rick and Morty is back, but in a slightly different way. Uh, this week is the premiere episode of Rick and Morty, the anime on Adult Swim, uh, August 15th. We were going to talk all about it during this episode, including an interview a little bit later. Uh, before we get into all of that, if you're new here or, you know, it's it's been a minute since since you heard this podcast on your, on your podcast feed, uh, I want to remind you how you can get in touch with us. Let us know your thoughts uh, about this show. Uh, you can find us on X. Uh, we're just, uh, it's called X. We're at Rick and Morty Pod. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Rick and Morty Podcast. Our Instagram is Rick and Morty Podcast. And our email, Rick and Morty Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on Reddit, uh, Rick and Morty Reddit.com, the official Rick and Morty subreddit. Lots of right. combos happening. Despite n- not having new episodes, there's still a lot of chatter happening over on, on that subreddit. Yeah. Our subreddit, less busy. Less busy. Uh, Rick and Morty podcast at reddit.com. Uh, you can also go to the website, Rick and Morty pod.com to find uh, all the episodes of our podcast, things like that. Uh, if you want to get video versions of this podcast, you can go to youtube.com slash apathetic enthusiasm. And if you want to support all of our podcasting endeavors, you can go to patreon.com slash apathetic enthusiasm. Big thanks to the patrons uh, where they're getting exclusive post shows. They're getting uh, additional content from a recent trip we took out to San Diego. Uh, all sorts of all sorts of perks over at Patreon.com. Uh, Brandon, does it feel yeah, different? Yeah. Does it does the energy feel different? I I, I know I'm looking at at the like re- video recording, so I can see the interdimensional RSS like frame around us. It feels yeah. like a completely different show. I don't <laughs> I don't know how it feels to you. Totally different uh, to me. It doesn't. It doesn't feel that that different to me, honestly. The only thing that uh, is different to me is that I think for like one of the first times in our friendship, I'm darker than you, <laughs> and and it, yeah. it, it's trippy. Yeah, it's weird. I also should probably start wearing glasses. Um, it's really gonna mess up everything with this podcast. Uh, we're gonna need you to shave your head, Brandon. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do it though because it'll just be like my tan, and then no, it's gonna look awful. That's why I can't shave this scrappy beard either. Yeah, for 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 the interdimensional RSS fans, uh, especially the audio listeners, uh, Brandon is significantly tanner than me. And if you want to know all about why he's more tan than me, check out Apathetic Enthusiasm. It's our other podcast where Brandon and I talk about everything that isn't Rick and Morty related. Um, yeah, so check those out. Uh. It, we're back. We're here uh, to share some stuff with you. But as we start every episode of Interdimensional RSS, it's important that we get into, first and foremost, some semi pertinent news. It's a triumph. Oh, oh, it's a triumph of uh, nature. Ho, oh, ha. Semi pertinent news. Ah! Yeah, that's all I yeah. got. That's, that's, that's what that's people what I come are back missing. <laughs> that's what they were missing is the. <laughs> it's, a tri- it's a triumph. It's a triumph of yeah. nature. Um, yeah, semi permanent news. Uh, well, welcome, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so there are there is some news to to pass around that is semi pertinent. Uh, of course, Rick and Morty season eight is in two thousand twenty five. We talked about it on our last full episode. Yeah. Um, so it's still semi pertinent uh, because I, I I saw some folks on on Reddit 
uh, especially with the anime announcement. They're like, wait, does this mean is is but is this regular show coming back eventually? Yes, yes, fine citizens, <laughs> it is it is coming back. So yeah. so we got yeah. that a few delays with you know some some personnel changes uh, over over at the show and and some other delays. Uh, so, so yeah, it, we are, it is going to be a little bit longer before we get the original show, uh, back, but thankfully we do have a new series, uh, that is premiering to kind of, kind of hold us over, um, something, something new to enjoy, uh, while we wait for season eight. Uh, but and, if, and, yeah, if you don't want to wait, if you don't want to wait for, if you don't want to watch the anime, which, you know, I can, I can understand why you wouldn't want to do something new and different and crazy. Uh, you can go buy the Blu-ray Rick and Morty box set seasons one through seven on September 10th uh, concludes all 71 episodes. This is from the press release. All 71 episodes from seven seasons of the award-winning series, copious special features, audio commentary, deleted scenes inside the episode segments, numerous featurettes, animatic sketches, and more. Um, That's right. You can get all of it. Um, you know, and, and what, you can what, own it in your house. You can you can own it. What I'm excited to see or hear is I know they're supposed to be like the featurettes, animatic sketches and stuff like that. Those things we've talked about on, on previous episodes were lacking in, in previous uh, Blu-ray releases. Yeah, I have seasons one through five right over my shoulder up here on Blu-ray. I think I stopped buying the new seasons in part because I was also purchasing them digitally. Uh, normally so I could keep up with the show because I, I wasn't seeing them on Adult Swim. So that was like the best way for me to watch the episodes. And uh, and so like I, I understand wanting to have a physical version of the show. Maybe you don't want a max subscription. Maybe you want to be able to take it out into the woods with you where you don't have an internet connection and like or electricity, but you just – need the like physical presence of rick and morty with you yeah. uh, but this the, this uh these additional segments audio commentary things like that uh i'm hopeful that they're adding more to it because i know early seasons had some audio commentary things like that but um very interested to see what will actually be included in this uh seven season set it's wow. wild that we're wow. seven seasons 71 episodes 71 man. only only <laughs> How many more seasons? A hundred? Uh, three, three at least, you know. At least three. Well, um, all right. Yeah, so go pick that up September 10th. Um, other semi-pertinent news. We had a we had a small uh, comic book convention take place out on the West Coast recently. Uh, you, you, you probably heard all about it in our San Diego Comic Con primer, uh, an episode that we released both on this channel and as well as over on Apathetic Enthusiasm. And yeah, we had a lot of fun out there. We got to do lots of cool things. We bought lots of cool things. If you want to hear all about that, we released a full episode on a Apathetic Enthusiasm, but specifically, a uh, few things of note uh, took place for Rick and Morty fans. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right, which you'll hear about when we talk about it a little bit later, Yeah, uh, including uh, uh, Rick and Morty, the anime panel, um, and then, uh, you know, missing, <laughs> mi missing Harry and Ian on the, on the floor and Spencer being there as well. Miss missing them, missing some Rick mobile and, and some, some Morty. Mobile. We eventually saw it. There was a point where we were walking somewhere and I, I, I was looking through my, <laughs> my pictures from Comic-Con and I just have this random video of like crowds walking in front of us <clears throat> and my phone is held up as I like video oh, the rick mobile driving down right. the street towards the hilton bayfront as that's we're right. like trying to rush off to some panel or something <laughs> uh yeah so so if you want to hear more about us uh, our san diego comic-con coverage go to apathetic enthusiasm uh we, we talk at length about it um one of the other things that happened it, it was before san diego but uh the 10th anniversary special of the comics got got released uh alex fear uh, fred stressing back back in action for for that one so uh if you're into the comics please go go check it out show alex some some love he uh he's 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 a great guy and he will talk your ear off about everything that he's that he's into um so so please do please please talk 
Yeah, synopsis of this comic is Rick Rick has decided he's finally ready to hang up his lab coat and move into a retirement home. But first, he enlists the help of the family to help pack up all of his crap out of the garage. Um, sounds like a winner to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, the, it goes on to talk about other things. But yeah, I mean, the comics are really interesting. And especially for fans, you know, we talk about, you know, a year long gap or, or gaps between seasons. The comics are a great way to kind of like revisit other ideas or stories from Rick and Morty and uh, try something new. So, yeah, um, yeah I encourage you to go get that. Speaking um, of trying something new, let's let's talk about the return of the Rickmobile. <laughs> where's, that? where's that? Yeah, the, where, Rick, where, the Rickmobile. There it is. Rickmobile. It is. Holding what? up my books. <laughs> it's, it's in my office at work. And people are like, oh, hey, that, those, those are cool bookends. Um, yeah, the, the Rickmobile last seen in like 2017, 2018. Uh, long, no, later than that. Maybe? Oh, I don't know. It, it's been a while. Mm, uh, yeah, I think it. It's it's back yeah. in action. It's back. It's back in action. It's it's going across the country as we speak. I think the last time I checked, it was in Louisville, um, <laughs> Kentucky. Uh, yeah, my Rickmobile's up up behind me. And uh, yeah, this time it's a little bit different. Whereas before, Rickmobile was going around selling merchandise. They're going around the country giving away merchandise. Yeah, and that's right. Also showing a clip of. Oh, I think maybe showing the first episode of Rick and Morty the anime, yeah. maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, so over in I, I think I think it's Utah. Uh, old old scary Terry folds got interviewed by the Adult Swim folks and was uh, was featured on their Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and and I talked to talked to him on uh, uh, in messages, and he's like, "Man, they it was." my interview was so, so short that they showed because like I talked about you guys and like how cool <laughs> and like, how like showed them all my tattoos and stuff like that. <laughs> talk, talk, talk about Randall and, and Thomas. And I was like, yeah, 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 that's way too much. We only get, we only get one minute on just, this short video. Just tell us you love Rick and Morty and then we can move. We're going to show your cool costume and move on. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you, if you haven't gotten a chance uh, to catch the Rick mobile, um, hopefully we get this episode out soon. It's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee on August 13th. Um, and then back in Atlanta, Georgia on August 15th for, uh, the, the premiere of the anime. Um, so a couple, couple more opportunities to, to check it out. Um, if you're in any of those cities or, or nearby, uh, go check it out. Say hi to, say hi to the folks. Um, yeah, it's a free event with some free, free goodies, and uh, you get to check out the new the new show. That is right, Travis. Um, the next bit of semi pertinent news uh, is actually very pertinent uh, to to this episode. Um, so I, I I deleted it from the show notes while you were watching. Oh, cool. I don't think I was looking at the show notes. I think I was looking at the website where I looked up the tour dates for the Rick movie. Oh, oh good, oh good, oh good, oh good. Uh, because I deleted uh, the, the, those bullets. So perfect. Anyway, perfect. This is a this is a fast and loose show, right? Like uh, lots of lots of lots of different things happening. Um, we're excited to be back. Yeah, again, slow season for for Rick and Morty uh, proper, but lots of exciting things happening for Rick and Morty anime, and that's what we want to talk about. So, let's get over into uh, well, do we do we do the thing? Do we do we do the thing where we say that's the semi pertinent news? And when we come back, oh, oh, that's right, that's right. The 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 ad, uh, there's after after the ad, we'll we, we will we will be talking more about Rick and Morty the anime. So stick around. We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> we're back, everybody. Uh, oh no, there's the music again. Okay, no, we're back. Uh, we're back, everyone. It, it, that was a great ad. Uh, whatever oh. reason. I love ads. You know what I love about ads is how (laughs) how good they are. Uh, All right, everybody. It is now time to get into the reason that you downloaded this episode. It is time for the main thing. Main thing, baby. Main thing. You know what I love, Brandon, is that with us doing Rick and Morty the anime, you didn't try to like do any cultural appropriation. You're just right back to doop. Like you're just yeah. like <laughs> let, let me let me let me just tell you, 
I I made a conscious effort to <laughs> any reference to appropriation. So uh, yeah, Good for you, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Brandon. <laughs> uh yeah so so here's the deal we went to san diego comic-con um we went to a panel uh for rick and morty the anime uh it was super awesome I, first and foremost i just want to say big thanks to adult swim to everybody at adult swim pr um everybody that we ran into that said hi to us or, or was so gracious to us while we were there at san diego comic-con and uh it's really it's like the second year there, um, but between Rip Mobile events, uh, between WonderCon when you were there uh, for the Smiling Friends interview, like we're the people that like come up and say hi to us, like it's it's super, it's just fun. It's fun that we're getting to know these people a little bit more, and uh, it's just it's such a friendly little uh, environment. So it so. is, it is, and they're like, hey, this is Brandon. He he won the he won. Well, first it's. Wait, which one are you? Are you the? Are you Travis Brand? Sorry. <laughs> which one? Which I'm one like, again? Uh, Sorry. It's fine. Sorry. It's fine. It's. I'm, You're I'm, way I'm more the... tan than usual. What's which one? <laughs> which one are you? I'm the I'm the Brandon one. I this is the guy who won the Golden Rick Head, which you know uh, the 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 weight of that is is decreasing exponentially every every year. I I it was like last year it was like holy crap it's the Golden Rick, and this year it was like what is that? Yeah. What did, is, what is that? Did, did you, you make, make that? that <laughs> Where'd you find such a glowy gold paint? That's that's really all. Aw- that's really awesome. Do, who do was, we? <laughs> who was the guy saying? Uh, oh, it was it was the producer for Rick and Morty the anime saying that like they had like a prototype of it like in their office or something. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, Jason Demarco. Yeah. 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 It's like well yeah well I won it Jason. <laughs> I, I hiked it. up that mountain in Malibu. Dang it. <laughs> uh. I, anyway. So yeah. So. Uh, the first thing that we did, uh, so I mean, obviously we did a ton of uh, adults and related stuff, but for Rick and Morty, we did uh, get a chance to go and attend the panel, um, which was which was really cool. It was the Rick and Morty anime panel, um, so it's kind of an introduction to the entire creative team. They showed some clips from the show. Um, they did a Q and A. Um, yeah, I don't know what. Do you have any additional thoughts from that panel or or things that stood out to you? Um, yeah, what, what, what was interesting about this panel uh, versus WonderCon when I interviewed uh, Smiling Friends, Zach and, and Mike, Michael, um, was we I did the interview with them first and then they did the panel after the fact. This yeah. one was well, like they did the panel first and, <laughs> and we had a little bit of cheating, uh, if, if we're being honest, of being like, oh, that is that's a good question. Oh, we should ask. We should ask that. Also, we know what to expect when it comes to the translator a little bit as well. So, like we, it was it was all it was it was interesting in that way. Um, it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that's the 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 most interesting thing about it all is that it is an international thing. Rick and Morty is international. Uh, all the dubs from all the different countries. That, I mean, there's there's so many different versions of it. Um, and so it stands to reason that uh, Takashi Sano, uh, the, the creator and director of of the series, uh, Rick and Morty anime, uh, is he's he doesn't speak English at all. So yeah. you need you need a translator. And uh, so the questions go through this like kind of like somebody asks a question, it goes to one translator, translates it to Takashi Sano, and then he. Spe- says it to a different translator who then speaks it in English. Um, and so that that's kind of how the, the panel went. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we gleaned some information from that w- when we eventually interviewed them. Um, what, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I just thought it was interesting because like, I mean, the the fandom for Rick and Morty is is pretty huge. It's 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 large. Um, the the fans of the show are definitely opinionated. Right. Um, but I think there's definitely some overlap between, you know, fans of, of anime, fans of Rick and Morty and uh, and really because of the release schedule and how long it takes to, to produce these episodes. Um, I think there was a lot of excitement for people to be able to see something new from Rick and Morty that uh, was maybe going to take a different spin on it or, or try something new. Uh, I will say and, and I think this probably comes comes across in our interview as well. Uh the, that creative team that was on stage really like seemed to love 
the original IP of Rick and Morty, right? Like, like they are fans first, and then they are taking that fandom and expressing it through their own art style, right? Um, through, through this this form of animation, and so, uh, yeah, it's really interesting, and I, I think, um, I don't know, like it's, we'll talk a little bit at the end of this episode about our initial thoughts on the show, and and maybe a little bit of what you can expect uh, from the anime. Uh, but yeah, in, in general, it was really exciting to have an opportunity to talk to them and to ask them about, you know, how the show came to be and, and things like that. That's, that's, that's right, Travis. And so want to say that without any further delay or de- adieu, adieu. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, uh, talk, we're going to play the interview, uh, with creator, director, Takashi Sano, executive producer, senior vice president of action and anime at the Adult Swim, Jason DeMarco, the producer, Takanari Maeda, and executive producer, Joseph Cho. Uh, with uh, Takanari, he was uh, doing the translation into Japanese, and then Joseph was doing the translation back into English. So, And then Jason uh, periodically speaks in English because that's the language he needs. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I am strictly English in this interview. So <laughs> you you are you are, which which is good. No appropriation on your end either. Um, what I will what I will say, what you won't hear is my voice in this because I said to Travis, I did the smiling interview, the smiling friends interview by myself. Uh, you get to do this one on your own. I'll just hold the camera. Yeah. Uh, so, so 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 if you're watching the video, all camera work is thanks to Brandon. <laughs> Uh, All right, here we go. Here is our interview with the creative team for Rick and Morty, the anime. Well, thank you guys so much for taking some time to meet with us. Uh, I'm Travis from Intermental RSS, the unofficial Rick and Morty podcast, and uh, really excited to talk to you about Rick and Morty, the anime. Uh, The first question that I have is, uh, what excited you the most about developing Rick and Morty uh, for an anime into like a full series? Original no. ポンケのリカのモーティのキャラクター世界観を使って全く別の新しいものを作れるっていうのが一番楽しいことですよね。自分が好きなキャラクターたちが自分の頭の中にあるだけのものを映像として新しく作れるっていうのはとても良いことだ
Rick and Morty with anime sauce on top. You know, right. that's not what we wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I feel Sano brought, but I see Sano should answer that as well. そう、so I think it kind of connects with what he saw, like what he what he got out of um, his version of the Rick and Morty, because you know, um, it's Rick and Morty itself is a, it's it's quite, I mean, you know, in a good way, and it's crazy, it's chaotic, and it's 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 just all kinds of things, you know, and and for him. Um, he, you know, he needed. He would love to preserve that, obviously, and and and, and because that's something that's unique and very appealing about about the world. But um, but what he thought he could do a little more uh, on 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 his take was to um, obviously the emotional um, emotional like arc or 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 the emotional responses of the characters. So really get get into their emotional responses a little more than than just outward expressions of um, whatever that they you know they talk about you know their, their nihilistic you know comments and whatnot but what's in their heart mm -hmm. you know how does that come through and so they're a little more dramatic a um, little more personal um, for each character so he tried to get in the head of each character a little more so that might be a little different from what the original yeah. um, uh, you know the, the flagship franchise uh, you know take on on these characters are yeah okay so yeah. so as you as you go in a little bit deeper and get into uh, more of the emotional aspects of those characters. Did you have a favorite character that you adapted for the anime, and maybe how did you change them a little bit to to, to tell your story a little bit better? スミスケの、<笑> So there's a through line that he created in terms of characters. I mean, he loves all the characters. I mean, so when you say like, how, which one do you, you know, did you really want to, did you like the best and you want to enjoy? He loves them all, so it's very hard for him to say. Um, but because there's a th uh, emotional through line that and the drama through line that he, put, you know, he has in the series, which is basically the relationship between. Morty and uh, and the the new female character um, who's, who's an alien um, character who's um, Morty's love interest. Okay. So there that you know so you'll see him you'll see Morty crying in there, <laughs> just getting his emotions out uh, on display, and then you'll see you know how this new the female uh, alien hero and characters uh, you know you know behave and then also you know interact with Morty. Um, so, like these two characters actually were were the core in terms of the emotional core of the story um, throughout um, throughout the series. So that's what he really tried to do in terms of the you know character building. Um, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, for for fans of anime in general who may be checking out this series for the first time, uh, are they going to need if maybe if they're not fans of Rick and Morty already, are they going to need to kind of go back and watch some other episodes to fully appreciate it, mm -hmm. or is this something that Feels like a good jumping off point for folks that want to want to get into this world for the first time. Mm. Uh, 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 uh
回詰め込んでるし、えー、と今回のシリーズを見て深く理解しようと思ったらもちろん本家を見てる方がいいですでもあの初めて見る人でも分かるようには作って、えー、今回のシリーズから初めて見た人があじゃあ本家の方はどうだろうと思って戻っていくっていうか。<笑>そっちをまた見てくれるようにって感じですね分かんないところは確かに残してるんですけどその分かんないところは本気を見れば分かるというふうに最高じゃないですか。<笑><笑> so, um, uh, The, the way it is, like the way he made this was、um, obvious, you know, I mean, there's so many references that he actually just put into this,、uh, uh, these episodes. So if you are used to watching the flagship franchise, you'll be like, oh, that, oh, that. Like you'll, you'll have a lot of those discoveries. So, of course, it would be good to watch it.、Um, but, you know, it, it's, it should be an easy entry point、um, for even the newcomers actually to the franchise. And then, if they go back to the、uh, flagship franchise, it'll actually broaden their、uh, understanding of it because it's like, oh, that's what he was talking about. Okay, that's what was being told in the anime, anime series. So, in a way, I mean,、um, you know, great for the network. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> on the flip side, for, for fans of Rick and Morty who maybe are new to anime or haven't, haven't really watched anime before, Do you have any recommendations or advice for people who are, who are jumping into the series for the first time in terms of things to appreciate or things to look for?、Uh, I, I don't, you know, actually, you know, I mean, one of the things that I thought would be interesting for this was,、um, um, I mean, what are the, what's the difference, you know, how is it done differently? And there are a lot of different questions. But one thing that's very, that stands out to me is the, the visual of it, right? And the movements of it. I mean, when you call it anim, you know, animation, 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 right?、And、so, Um, the way the characters move, I think, in, in the, the Flagship franchise versus how the characters move and how the action is portrayed here is done in a very classic、um, anime way. I mean, there's a, somebody who asked a question at the panel about, like, is the walk like kind of Lupin the Third? You know, because, you know, he's done Lupin the Third for, for before. And so obviously, those movements and, and kind of a deformed action, like deformed movement action, where Where you stretch and, 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 and come, you know, come together and it cuts in a certain way. And, and that's in there.、Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's different from flagship franchise, of, of course. So it's something that I'm sure will、um, be appreciated with, from people anime, like, who are used to certain tropes、um, mm-hmm. and certain animations. So I think that's also a difference, but also at the same time, it's something that they will come to appreciate. Oh, this is the kind of anime that I've seen before. There are elements of it,、um, even though it wasn't set out to be. Like anime, like we, we didn't, like I think he, he mentioned a lot that we were, you know, he wasn't trying to fit Rick and Morty into the anime mold. Yeah, you're right. right. But, right. That, that, but that influence will start, you know, but, but does show just because of his background. So、Absolutely. it's something that fans will,、uh, you know, hopefully the anime fans will also appreciate as well. Yeah, we're not trying to do capital A anime. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. by virtue of the fact that he is an anime director and it's made in Japan, it contains elements of a lot of anime tropes. Yes. Well, we are super excited to see the new series、uh, when it premieres. Congratulations on the show, and thank you all so much for talking with us. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You really very appreciate much. it.、Yeah. Appreciate and there you have it. That was our <laughs> interview with the entire, well, I, I, I say entire creative team, but it's like the principal creative team for Rick and Morty the anime. <laughs> yeah, what, what, is, what, is, what is the term for it? Like the core creative team? The, the nucleus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the,、oh. the, yeah, the protons, the electrons.、Uh, yeah. It's,、uh, it's the anatomy of. <laughs> what's the powerhouse of the cell? The, um, uh, the uh, DNA. No. <laughs> no, DNA. Um, um, I'm、okay. going to think of、Anyways. it. Leave it in the comments. Leave what the、uh, powerhouse of the cell is. <laughs> Um, we weren't ready. We weren't ready to transition back to, 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 to <laughs> talking about this. We weren't ready for the show in general. We're definitely not ready to transition back. So,、uh, yeah. So, so we, that was the interview. What did you think, Brandon? Yeah. What did I, what did I think?、Uh, so, one, it was, it was the first time we've ever done an international interview.、Uh, so, you know, and I say we, but you did it. So, congratulations to you, Travis.、Uh, mostly, you know, I, I just wanted to hold the camera.、Um, Yeah, my Zoloft wasn't 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 in full effect going、yeah. on. Yeah, nah, I don't, 
I don't want to smile where I don't actually know what's going on. During the during the panel, I'll say that I had Google Translate on as as they were talking, and every once in a while, Google Translate was like, okay, 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 I know what I know what they're they're saying, but then every once in a while, it would give me something, probably a little incorrect, and <laughs> dare I say it, racist. So uh, I didn't save uh, some of that stuff. Um, anyway, so so the international piece that that was really really cool. Um, what I what I appreciated was this sentiment that Rick and Morty the anime, where like we're calling it anime because we're from the West and yeah. we're in, we're in the U.S. and so anything from Japan is like anime, right? But yeah. but that's not that's not what what Takashi set out uh, Sano set out to do, right? He just set out to just make a cartoon animation of Rick and Morty. Uh, that he was inspired by, and ma- and make it his own, right? Yeah, and- yeah. No, I I totally appreciate that. And the fact that cultural differences, like stylistic differences, the traditions of Japanese animation, um, they're they're different than things that are produced in the United States or in North America. Uh, but I think that's really cool that they can they can tell new stories and tell a different version of these characters like through that style um and and especially in the case of rick and morty it can all technically still fall into the same universe multiverse type situation because of the interdimensional aspect of rick and morty that's already already baked into the show yeah 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 for 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 sure for sure um so we wanted to we do we do want to give you a few kind of comments going giving giving you kind of a sneak peek into the show that's starting again this Thursday. Um this this should come out on Tuesday the the 13th. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, Travis, what are some of your non-spoiler thoughts on yeah. the show? No no spoilers. I I will say I've already seen the first two episodes of the series. Uh we did get a little bit early access to, to, to the show. Um, it's, it's interesting. And, and it drove some of my questions, I think in the interview as well is um, it is a different approach to Rick and Morty, right? This, this Rick and Morty, as, as I know it. And as I was first sort of the first thing I really appreciated about Rick and Morty was the comedy aspect of it. The, the inappropriate humor, the jokes, the, that that voice of Dan Harmon and to to a similar extent Justin Roiland originally and all of the creative team and writers that have gone into the show that have have sort of set that comedic tone for the show. <clears throat> Some of the one off gags, things like that, are things that we initially, I at least I initially appreciated about the show. And then building on that, this extensive interdimensional environment with you know sci fi hijinks and things like that. Um, Rick and Morty itself has a lot of heart, but it, it, it comes to the surface in doses, right. Or, or between, you know, burp and fart jokes and things like that. So I, I think Rick and Morty, the anime, while it still does lean into some humor, it, it's telling a little bit more of an emotionally driven story. Um, it takes its time more to tell that story. Yeah. It's not. It's not as quick to move along. Uh, Something that I didn't fully even realize until I started watching the second episode is this is a story that takes place over a series of episodes. So much like much unlike Rick and Morty, the original show where it was mostly self-contained, especially in the first couple seasons, each episode was sort of standalone. You would get some canon that would extend over the course of, you know, or it just pop up from episode to episode over a series of time. This is very much w- one story that is tied together over a series of episodes. So I think when you watch the first episode, it's going to feel unfinished. It's going to feel like the story's not done. It, they're still telling it. So because so because, that, yeah. because it's not it's not done. Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, so first, uh, most recent comment first. The, the feeling kind of undone uh the the episode is it, it's told in kind of a uh choppy kind of way um 
but I could, I could, even though I, I haven't watched the second episode, I feel that there is more to each part of those stories that is going to be told throughout the the ten seasons or ten episodes in total that I that I don't understand fully yet, and so it kind of banks on you wanting to to see what's going to happen next and and understanding as a as a fan of David Lynch, I'm okay with choppy yeah. shit <laughs> yeah. because I'm going to be like. Okay, yeah, we're like, what is what is the meaning behind this? Um, as far as the humor goes, yeah. So it's not like it's it's not all like uh, this like sci fi humor and gags. Uh, it does have humor, but I think because it, it's coming from it is a cultural difference, and it's it's like when The Office goes from the UK to to the US. It's like when Ghosted goes from the UK to the US. It's like any. It's like everything that comes from the UK to the US. Like the comedy is different uh, because even even though we're so close as far as allies go, we're still culturally different. And um, sure, sure. And I and thing. I think there's a language barrier between the anime and the US, you know, dubbed version that goes even further than those cultural differences between like UK and US, where a joke that may really land or be really punchy in the Japanese version maybe doesn't translate as effectively or the delivery is not the same or it it just maybe a direct yeah. translation doesn't have the same comedic value as it did. Like, and, and obviously like the producers on the show, they're, they're good. They're going to do their best to kind of, um, make that as as work as well as possible but i i do feel and i think in the first episode especially i was like wow i don't feel like this is as 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 active with the jokes and the mm -hmm. humor and, and a huge part of that is like dan Harmon's brain right and his like the way he thinks it's very fast and it's very much like go 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 and so i think because he's not producing on this show right like you're not you're not going to have just like an onslaught rapid fire of 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 dialogue and yeah uh, joke after joke after joke yep. or 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 you know sci-fi stuff that makes you go rewind i don't understand what he just said let me go rewind and sit so so with that we we have that out of the way what is what is left then is a story that is not rushed by that same level of dialogue it has time to build on itself to uh relax in those like quiet moments right where you can appreciate the art the environments things like that yeah and it, uh, it's, it, it's like setting it's like world building this particular universe of brick and yeah, morty yeah uh especially especially the first episode it, it's establishing this is who the characters are in this world, um, and if and if you can if you can get behind that, then stick with us for nine more episodes, uh, and we'll we'll show you so, something uh, that's really interesting to me. It was discussed in the panel, and I don't know that we got into it really in the interview. Um, I think Takashi Sano was asked uh, something. I don't know if he was directly asked about time travel or he's asked about what's different in the show. And in the panel, he talked about how the idea of time and time travel and moving through time was something that he felt wasn't really focused on much in the original series. And, and we've talked about it in plenty of episodes in the past. T time travel is literally shelved in the garage, right? Time travel stuff. And, he is leaning into that. He's leaning into this idea. It starts out in the first episode with this, you know, this device, this this thing that could potentially manipulate time. And I that that concept extends to the format of the show. You talk about how it kind of jumps around, it jumps forward, it jumps back, it jumps between different storylines. And and I think there's an aspect there where it's like, well, where are we in time? throughout this is this real life especially in the first episode like because there is a progression of time that also is explored so i think i think that's interesting and 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 is something that 
you know, you can appreciate a little bit differently through this lens of, of the show. Yeah. And, and on, and on that note, the, you know, we talk about sci-fi tropes. I, I feel what this, and this is one of the things I love about Rick and Morty, especially early episodes was that it's like pop culture. Here's all the pop culture references in sci-fi that we know and love. Let's, let's talk about them and let's laugh about them. Let's, let's deconstruct them. Let's, you know, oh, heist. Yeah, let's talk shit about heist episodes. Yeah. Um, you know, all, all that type of stuff where there's all, uh, I think Matt Brady uh, wrote the book about like the science of Rick and Morty, right? Um, like there are sci-fi aspects of Rick and Morty, but those are just kind of like, those are part of the, the butt of the joke. Mm-hmm. But at the, at the, at the root of that, it's still all very, very interesting concepts, right? The simulation inside of simulation inside of simulation. Well, I think what we're doing with Rick and Morty anime is telling a story with heart, but also focusing on that sci-fi aspect and really being like, here's one sci-fi aspect we're going to focus on. And, and maybe my prediction's wrong, but we'll see. But let's, let's explore that over 10 episodes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the last thing I'll say is, and this came up in the, in the panel as well is, um, the driving force behind the series, right? And I think Rick tends to be the main focus in Rick and Morty. Uh, he, he's the he's the first name of the call sheet, so to speak, right? And uh, he, a lot of the adventures are focused on Rick and things like that. Um, but it was it was brought up in the panel that the driving force, the the, the theme or through line through the anime series is sort of Morty's love life, right? The relation uh, that Morty has with this new love interest and and sort of that drives a lot of what's happening in this show. So I think it'll be interesting to see that take, see how much more the show focuses on Morty maybe than, you know, Rick's crazy adventures. And uh, and, and I'm curious to see where it goes. And I, 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 I think it'll be interesting to see, uh, especially once the whole series has come out like what what was the whole story that they're because yeah with with one episode of rick and morty you can kind of be like all right this was the contained you know 30 minute 20 20 minute you know story they were trying to tell but with this this show kind of reaching across multiple episodes i'm curious to see what that what that whole story is going to be throughout throughout the season yeah yeah for for sure definitely um yeah i'm i'm looking i'm i am looking forward to exploring that and and looking at it uh through through those lenses um i'm also yeah i'm not i'm not a this another thing like neither of us are huge anime fans uh not that we don't like anime it's just that we don't watch anime uh my younger brother you know that crunchy roll sub uh uh you know uh subscription he has he's he's given it to me but i don't watch it um but uh so we're interested to see from our perspective you know if that if that does change anything in us uh, i'm also interested I, I said this on reddit earlier i'm interested in people who are anime fans what they think of the show absolutely um, yeah i'm yeah. i'm interested in what non rick and morty fans if they do give this a shot go ahead and, and watch it. it. They're not Rick and Morty fans, but they're anime fans. So they, they give it a shot. I'm interested in what they say. And probably they're not going to listen to this podcast, but you know, I would, I would love to know what their thoughts are on it. Um, real quick. Last, last thought I have, and we, I promise we'll move, move on is the one anime trope that I, that I, that I know is like the, the underpowered, like, kid or somebody who is is not in a position of authority and then they grow into power and they grow on their own uh and there's always like you know a master who who knows what's going on um maybe maybe that is why the focus on morty is more important in here yeah yeah i can see that kind of like that so anyway the thought we'll see what happens after 10 episodes um but uh thursday August 15th, you check it out next day on Max. You let us know what you think over on X, over on Instagram, or 
Rick and Morty podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and then if you're an anime purist, if you don't, if you're not into the dubs, right? You want you want to hear it in Japanese. Uh, Adult Swim has you covered as well. I, August seventeenth, uh, that should be Saturday. Uh, they are they are airing the uh, subbed version uh, as part of their tsunami block of of Adult Swim. So. Um, if if you absolutely love it on Thursday and want to watch it again in Japanese, you're covered. If you're if you're a purist and you're like, nope, I want I I only watch the subs, <laughs> uh, they got you covered there too. But um, yeah, and and then again, ten episodes, uh, should be coming out weekly as far as I know. I don't I don't I don't know that yeah. they've announced any breaks in schedule or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, that's that is the show. That is that is what um. I mean, do we have any listener suggestions or short outs for this? I, you I, you I mean, shorted out some people in the show already. Yeah, um, I, I don't, I don't really think we have anybody. I know uh, my my coworker Mike Mike E, uh, who doesn't watch Rick and Morty at all. He has started listening to this podcast because he was listening to apathetic apathetic enthusiasm, and uh, he's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but. You know, I like listening to you guys. I just listen to you guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sam's the same way. I doubt he'll listen to this, but he <laughs> he always brings up conversations that happen on the podcast. Our uh, our, our co-worker listener minute. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I'll give a special shout out to Randall and Thomas. Yeah. Uh, who are just a couple of great guys, and they're, they're just so kind to us uh, anytime we see them at a Rick and Morty event. Uh, so I don't know if they'll hear this either, uh, but we wish them the best and, and hope things are going well for them. And they're getting uh, much needed rest because uh, because they work yeah. they work uh, quite a bit uh, during I, those those convention weekends. I, I I want I want to second that. So Randall, w- w- the first time we ever met him was the Rickmobile. The first time around, uh, he gave me a, a Rickmobile shirt uh, after some poking and prodding. It didn't take. He, he gave us our his Phoenix Project theories, and it was like it was it was wonderful. He's such a he's such a nice guy. Uh, we've seen him every year at you know two years in a row over at the Adult Swim Fest down down in San Diego. He's been doing that for like ten years. Yeah. Um, and then Thomas is down there as well. Thomas is amazing as well. Like he's he's been there a couple years. He's taking up kind of the lead on that that stuff. And these guys. I just got a shout out. They work so hard and they are such big fans and they're so wonderful. Their presence is so wonderful. Um, they, you know, adult swim should cherish the shit out of them <laughs> because, because they, they, they do an amazing, amazing job. So yeah. uh, shout out to Randall and Thomas. All right, everybody, we are going to keep our normal recording schedule, which means we will be uh, making episodes of this podcast uh, on Monday nights, like like we always have, uh, so you should hear our reviews uh, usually on Tuesdays, unless there's some sort of other delay. So so we should we won't have new episodes out like dropping on Fridays, even though the anime is coming out on on Thursdays. Um, so so stay tuned for those, and uh, yeah, uh, let us know what you're looking forward to with the Rick and Morty anime. Let us know. Uh, what your thoughts are, and we will see you next time with a brand new episode. Music playing. Bye, everybody. Yeah, that's it. See you later. Bye.